Hey y'all, real quick before the video starts, if you enjoy, please like, if you're coming back on the regular, please subscribe, and feel free to comment. I hope you enjoy, and I'll see you in a sec. Hello everybody, welcome back to another Age of Sigmar lore video, um, or reaction video, I should say. So, we're gonna kind of hop back into it. I didn't abandon the series, we'll get more Baldur's Gate out soon. I want to record some other games at some point, hopefully, soon. <laughs> um just haven't had a good time to record Baldur's Gate. So that last video that came out, that's going to be the last uh, for that recording segment. So hopefully a bunch of problems that were in that one get fixed in this next one. Okay, and I guess let's just get right into it. You know, we basically left off at the very start of the Age of Sigmar with the uh, Stormcast Eternals being unleashed for the first time to uh, battle the forces of chaos. Yep, but I'm I remember that. I'm going to back up a little bit here oh. because there are a lot of events that got us to that point and I skimmed over a lot of stuff in the first part which they're far more significant and detailed than I went into. You know, we're talking about okay. the whole Age of Myth, the Age of Chaos, mm -hmm. Sigmar's Alliance and everything that led him to retreat back into Azir. So, without much further ado, let us continue our journey through the Age of Sigmar. The story of the Age of Sigmar is ultimately the story of two sides of the same coin. Oh. On one side, Sigmar, god of order, protector of those who are good. And on the other, Archaon, demigod and manifested will of the Chaos Gods. So it's not even god versus god, it's Demigod boosted by the Chaos Gods versus Sigmar. Oh, this is actually interesting. Looking at Archeon's mount, it has um it has three. It has why am I blanking on their names? They have Korn, Nurgle, and Zinch, not in that order. <laughs> um on the so this is before Slanesh was a thing. Okay. As Sigmar was fated to take on the mantle of God King, or maybe Sinesh was was fated to backing? head the greatest invasion that the mortal realms had ever seen. A warlord so terrible that his presence instills fear in even the mightiest of Chaos champions, mortal or otherwise. As oh, Sigmar wow. clung to malice, hurtling through the voids of space for eons, darker pages of history were being turned. Tales of these bleak millennia are rarely told, for few live to tell them, but their legacy lives on. Oh, is this the Age of Chaos? the darkness of the Realm of Chaos, Archaon, the Three-Eyed King, Eberchosen, and Grand Marshal of the Apocalypse arose. Interesting. They say that the stars in the Realm of Chaos still echo with the screams of his birth planet, destroyed and burnt to ashes in his rage. So this is interesting because, so I'm going to be completely honest. I thought Age of Sigmar was strictly fantasy, but this almost seems like fantasy with the ability to travel to other planets, which is pretty dang cool, especially for like a fantasy setting or like a kind of like the tech level, I guess, that they're at, um, at this point, I think. So, but he's also being boosted by the Chaos Gods, and we do know that the Chaos Gods are the same Chaos Gods that are on Warhammer 40k, not just the Extra Sigmar. So I wonder if there's something going on there. The Ever Chosen alone knows the truth of his origins, but there okay. are those who remain in the Realm of Chaos under the watchful eyes of the Ruinous Gods who remember what happened for near countless years after his rage manifested. Archeon tore his way across the realm of chaos, at the front of countless legions of demons and corrupted mortals. He massacred, destroyed, and ripped the hearts out of all in his path. Oh, so he was worlds fighting ending chaos bloodline. himself. And nothing could stop him atop his demonic steed, Dorgar, Dorgar. who consumed the souls of those Archeon defeated in battle. So he was a, Archon was a proper demon killer. Like he's obviously on chaos and chaos fights amongst itself. But if he's eating the souls of whatever he kills or his Mount Dogar is, then they can't come back into the warp. 
and he's fighting things in the war. So he might have done a massive blow to chaos himself by just murdering everybody. If this goes off of the same kind of style as 40k does. These souls became a part of Dorgar, trapped deep within him. Not quite alive, nor quite dead. Oh, okay. Confined in horror for all eternity to be tormented by the Everchosen. None could stand before Archeon's sinister, twisted corruption. Royals and demons alike were slaughtered as Archeon waded through the lakes of blood of his own creation. Civilizations <laughs> that had existed for millennia were lost overnight, their lives snuffed out like candles in a gale. But Archeon- Abaddon wishes, Abaddon wishes he was Archeon level. Archeon never Archeon. submitted his will to one god of chaos alone. Oh, no Abaddon ever wishes. Than that. And he had his sights set on a prize higher than immortality. He reached for goals far beyond the promises of demonhood. And he wanted to become another demon? He wanted to become another Archeon's god? For Archeon's wish was to stand among the gods of ruin themselves, not as servant, but as equal. As Archeon becomes the next? He wanted his own realm of chaos, and nothing would stand in his way. He had foreseen his destiny in visions and knew that he would become the greatest champion of chaos to have ever existed. Oh, okay. He allied himself with the dark gods Nurgle, Corn, Slanesh. Okay, so Slanesh was still around. Turn, taking the strengths of each god and bending them to his will. He slaughtered in the name of the Blood God, who relished in the spilled blood that flowed from Archeon's warpath. He spread the contagions of Nurgle, unleashing a blight so powerful on the immortal Shantorians that even they, fabled for their immunity to disease, burst from within. Jeez, forms. Golly. His alliance with Zinch allowed him to learn of his masterfully deceptive and manipulative ways, which in turn he used to destroy rival powers. Even the mightiest of immortal demons, so powerful that mortal weapons couldn't scratch them, fell before Archeon, who fed their own arrogance. Some of this art is pretty them sick. Destroy themselves. As the endless eons overlapped Nothing with the from age of myth, even the chaos gods who all favoured Archeon began to doubt his incredible growth of power. For what if he should choose to follow but one of them in secret? The chaos gods continually expend most of their efforts trying to supersede and conquer one another. A tool as powerful as Archeon was too dangerous to let live. For he could bring about their own ruin if he turned his calculated malice towards them, aided by a rival god. And yeah. so each of them sought to bring Archeon under their thumb, but none of them was successful. Archeon was immune to their bribes and temptations. Kind of like Abaddon in that manner, but Abaddon... The Chaos Gods... If, so if they're in the same universe, Chaos Gods definitely learned from Archeon not to do that. Because with Abaddon, they keep kind of like dunking on him with his with their own people. Like you got, you they're like you got chaos undivided, but we got chaos divided, and we're gonna like mess with you a bit so you don't become too powerful. And then that's why Bellicor is kind of a problem because he's purely backing Abaddon right now, which is a bit interesting. And Abaddon wants to use the powers he gets from Chaos to kill Chaos, whereas Archeon seems like he just wants to become another Chaos God. Seeking nothing they had to offer at his continued rejections. In their rage, the Chaos Gods Nurgle, Korn, and Zinch sent their mightiest champions to end Archeon. Not so Such though. power could not so easily be overturned. Archeon met each challenge, rising to them as he always had any obstacle that fell before him, and he emerged triumphant. Watching Archeon <laughs> tear apart each of their champions without remorse, the Chaos Gods decided that they would finally place their trust in Archeon to follow the interests of each of them, for he would never follow any one of them alone. Having defeated these mightiest of dark they really said, well, we can't kill him. So 
We'll leave him be. Sounds like a bunch of cowards to me. I mean... Probably are. Maybe except for corn, but even then. Champions. Archeon Steed, Dorgar, drank the souls from their foul corpses and began to mutate. A head oh, three consumed that's why his mounts erupting from his form. Dorgar and Archeon were now more powerful than ever. The gods made Archeon this is pretty a demigod and bestowed upon him great gifts. Atop his head, they placed the crown of domination, a fear inducing icon of his favor by the gods. They clad pretty him with the armor helmet. of Morkar and armed him with a mighty sword containing the enraged soul of a legendary demon. They also gave him the eye of Shirian, allowing him to glimpse the future. As for the fourth god, Slanesh, he had gorged himself to excess on the near endless souls of the dead that were released from the destruction of the old world. Oh, so so Slanesh was just was like his gluttony vibing. that Slanesh was left weakened, forced to hide. But the ever-present oh. Zinch betrayed his location to the gods Malerion and Tyrion who were allied with Sigmar. In the Age of Myth, they let that alliance crumble as they selfishly captured Slanesh whilst desperately seeking out their own kind. Nevertheless, oh, the mark of Slanesh they could have killed Slanesh. Archeon's shield and Dorgar's chestplate, recognition of the ever-chosen's allegiance to the Dark Prince. The Great Horned Rat of the Skaven took Slanesh's place on the Chaos Pantheon, but Archeon refuses to see him as worthy. That doesn't stop him using the Skaven as his tools, however, for the Skaven's realm tunneling abilities can breach even the mightiest of defenses. Such techniques would become instrumental to Archeon. I know nothing about the Great Horned Rat. Well, okay, that's a lie. I know he's. He came around when the world fell, the old world fell, and that he is the god of the uh, Skaven, but I know very little besides that. But it is interesting, Age of Sigmar has five god chaos gods, but Slanesh is heavily, heavily weakened. Which is very interesting to think about in comparison to Warhammer 40k. The ...success in the Age of Chaos. The unnerving exploits of Archeon in a dimension beyond the mortal realms were hidden from Sigmar, who was oh, busy okay. creating alliances between the gods of the mortal realms during the Age of Myth. But as this great age drew to a close, even he was aware that something was amiss by the arrival of terrible omens. In the great city of Azaheim, the statues started to weave blood from their eye sockets, and the searing marks of the Everchosen began to appear throughout the realms. The most horrifying precursor huh. of what was to come occurred in the city of Twelve Spires. The fated city was attacked overnight its inhabitants were brutally massacred, and those responsible gone, without trace, long before the realms even knew of their incursion. It is said that the only remains of those who once called the Twelve Spires home was an enormous banner made of their flesh and etched with the burnt mark of the Ever Chosen. As but whispers of Archon's good. arrival started to spread eerily across the stars, Sigmar mustered his forces in Azaheim, not moments too soon before rifts were torn in the sky that shook the realms as Archeon tore through the very fabric of reality that separated the eight realms from the ninth. So began the Age of Chaos with a series of battles unlike any that had ever been known, and culminating with the fated battle of the Burning Skies. To be okay. Continued. Oh, to be continued. Already near the end. So, this is very interesting. So, in relation to 40k, like trying to look at parallels, this is almost 
like the um, horse heresy, but no betrayal. And also, a lot of the gods were weakened at this point. Horus didn't have an insane amount of power. Like, he could fight the Emperor, but Emperor wasn't isn't god level, I don't think. Um, huh. I almost wonder... Because this really gets me thinking and wondering if, like, they'll do something like this with 40k, where big battle, another big battle ensues, and then... I know what happened is that, well, I don't know exactly what happened, but I know the world gets reset and that starts the Age of Sigmar from the old world. And I almost wonder if something like that's going to happen with 40k. But I think Age of Sigmar still has the Great Horned Rat, which means there's still five Chaos Gods, which means we could see another Chaos God arise in Warhammer 40k, which would be pretty dang cool. Um, let's write out the thing, see if there's anything else, and then we'll call the video here. Wow. Okay, so the storyline basically just keeps getting more and more intense in this series, and... Okay, so there's not... I'm just gonna talk. I'll finish off the video, I like the video. But, um, with that, I hope y'all enjoyed. I will definitely come out with another one of these as soon as I can. Um, yeah. I, again, hope you enjoyed. Please like, comment, subscribe, and... I'll see you in the next one. Let me know if there's any people you recommend me watching or anything cool about Age of Sigmar or anything else you want me to react to going forward. Um, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Make sure to have a wonderful day and bye-bye.